In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the non-normal procedure for an EEC going into alternate mode. EC stands for Engine Electronic Control. This consists of two computers, one being active and the other standby, which receive input from airplane and engine sensors, and uses this to electrically command the engine to accelerate or decelerate the engine in a controlled manner, to the desired N1. As soon as the master caution light illuminates, the flying pilot states, My aircraft. This puts aircraft control first, establishing that someone is focused on flying the aircraft, while the other pilot can address the issue. ENG, an abbreviation for engine, is illuminated on the first officer's enunciator panel. The enunciator panel's purpose is to draw the pilot's attention to a panel outside of their normal field of view, in this case, the EEC portion of the aft overhead panel. The auto throttle disengage lights are also flashing below the MCP. Having recognized an issue exists, the master caution light is extinguished to prevent becoming a distraction. ALTN is illuminated on one of the EEC switches, so the pilot flying calls for the EEC alternate mode checklist. The pilot monitoring checks if it is on the QRC, if applicable, then refers to the Quick Reference Handbook or QRH. The checklist is listed under A in the QRH for alternate. The pilot monitoring reads out loud the checklist title and condition and seeks agreement from the pilot flying that this is the appropriate checklist before continuing. The ALTN in the black box in the top left corner visually matches the text we saw on the EC button. When both pilots agree this is the correct checklist, the first item is performed. It directs if the auto throttle is engaged to disengage it. It is already disengaged. Step 2 is to retard both thrust levers to the mid position, with a note that this prevents exceeding thrust limits when switching to the EEC alternate mode. Step 3 directs us to switch the EEC mode switches one at a time to the alternate mode, with a note that this ensures both engines operate in alternate mode. Please notice, the affected EC switch shows both on and alternate, this is referred to as soft alternate mode. When the switch is pressed, the on is removed, and the mode is then referred to as hard alternate mode. Step 4 states that the auto throttle can be engaged, if needed, with a note that maximum thrust limiting is available with the auto throttle engaged. Step 5 warns to not exceed engine limits and states that engine limit protection in alternate mode is not the same as in normal mode. Step 6 is conditional, using bold text to draw the pilot's attention to it being an if conditional step. If the display source enunciation is shown and the display source checklist has not been completed, then we go to the display source checklist. In this case, the enunciation is not shown, and therefore the four black boxes indicate the EEC alternate mode checklist has now been completed. This short checklist demonstrates how a non-normal issue is safely addressed using standardized procedures. Please subscribe to learn of our future videos and feel free to comment below. Thank you.